As humans, we have five senses. I have four. I am not human. So in theory, in order to create an enjoyable experience, all senses need to be treated well. But when you're only limited to two of the five, it's important to make sure both are equally cared for rather than just prioritizing one. But like, yeah, this game looks good, but does it sound good? No, the answer is no, it sounds terrible. There's a lot that goes into a game's sound other than just the music, but I think it holds a greater purpose in games than a lot of other people think. So please, allow me to attempt to prove this lukewarm take to absolutely nobody. <laughs> I think to really understand how important music in games can be, we have to look at some games that excel in their involvement in the music. And a game that I think really benefits from its music is Mario Kart 8. Mario Kart music had always been pretty good up until now, and I don't think many people were listening to the soundtrack thinking, huh. Needs more jazz. But my god, was this an amazing addition. Not only does the soundtrack fit the fast-paced nature of Mario Kart, but it also stood out for many popular games at the time. And the way they incorporated it into the game was just flawless. Like the way it changes when you go underwater, depending on what part of the track you're in. I absolutely adore this soundtrack. It's definitely my favorite out of all the Mario Kart games. If I had to pick a favorite from this soundtrack, it's gotta be Dolphin Shoals. Just for the saxophone solo alone. Jesus. As you can tell, part of what makes a good video game soundtrack good is how it fits into the game, and whether it suits the gameplay or not. And though I've talked about it before, I really want to go more in depth as to why I like this next game series soundtrack. Animal Crossing. I'm talking about Animal Crossing again, alright? Yeah, I know. I literally just talked about the music in these games in the last one of these. But come on. These games have some of the most weirdly fitting soundtracks I've ever heard, and I absolutely love them to death. The music takes a lot of cues from Bossa Nova and just jazz in general, whether it be a particularly jazzy chord or the use of rhythm and instruments give off that vibe. The soundtracks are incredibly versatile and fitting into almost any situation, which is why we see so many YouTubers and streamers using the songs from the games as background music. They could be put over somebody talking about whatever mundane thing going on or some British guy screaming at Minecraft for two hours on stream. Since I've already talked about the music in these games, I want to keep this brief. So some tracks from the games that I think would really encapsulate everything great about these game soundtracks are Working for Tom Nook from the first game, the title theme from Wild World, 4pm from City Folk, 12am from New Leaf, and the title theme from New Horizons. Also real quick, I just want to mention an amazing jazz piano musician called Polygon Piano. He's done some incredible jazz piano covers of a handful of songs from the Animal Crossing games, as well as a few other game series. I'll leave a link to him in the description, I highly recommend it. Well did Nintendo invent Atmosphere, Charlie? Yeah, I didn't think so. I couldn't just choose one soundtrack to represent this category, so I'm just gonna talk about atmosphere. There's not much in games that I love more than atmosphere, like a foggy setting in the woods, or a foggy setting on an island, or a foggy setting underwater, or a foggy setting with fog. What I'm trying to say is visually atmospheric games and settings are cool, and sounds play a great role in setting an atmosphere. Did I mention the fog? Water levels are notoriously atmospheric, and all of them by law have terrible controls, but great music. Donkey Kong Country's aquatic ambience is so good it's scary. David Wise, the composer for Donkey Kong Country, spent five weeks inputting samples into a music tracker to create one of the most impressive and beautiful songs on the SNES. My brain just doesn't understand how a system with a limit of four megabytes can produce such complex sounds. Dire Dire Docks from Super Mario 64 is definitely one of my all-time favorite tracks from the N64 era. Koji Kondo's choice of instruments and melodies are perfect for the setting of the water levels. I don't know what utter hell he was in to make the Haunted House theme. I think he was just in hell. God, no. Minecraft's soundtrack is absolutely perfect for the game, so it's weird that nobody's talking about it. Absolutely nobody. Now, you've heard it like a million times from different people, but please, just give me this one. Anthony Fantano gave Minecraft Volume Alpha an 8 out of 10. Which is like an 11 for normal people. God, this soundtrack is amazing. The simple, calming piano tracks with a hint of emptiness reflect that of the game itself. It is, or at least was, a very simple, empty game where all you do is excavate and create. I'm so happy it's been a constant throughout the game's history and that they haven't tried changing it and that they haven't tried changing it. There's something to be said about a soundtrack that perfectly complements the nature of the game it's for, and I think I just said it. <laughs> this soundtrack's been talked to death before, so I won't stay on it for too long, but I'd recommend Dry Hands from Volume Alpha and Intro from Volume Beta. You can't have one without the other. One thing I'll say is that indie game music can often be way better and more fitting than most AAA games out there. Indie game creators just kind of have a knack for making some of the best game music and- Damn it, was that a segue? Undertale. <laughs> 
I've definitely beaten this one before. Listen, this video is about music and not whether I've beaten the game or not, okay? Piss off. Imagine if Earthbound's music was mostly just the same melodies but played at different speeds with different instruments, which works surprisingly well at building atmosphere and aiding more in emotional moments by bringing back a motif that was specific to a certain character or area that was important in the overall story of the game. Also, dog. Well then, that's just Undertale soundtrack, but explained horribly. <laughs> Toby Fox is scary. How the hell did he do this? Twice. Not only did the man make Undertale, he made Undertale again, but different. And mostly on his own. I'm convinced he's one of those lizard folk. His compositions aren't just really impressive, but they far exceed most AAA offerings made by actual composers. Like, how? And not only does the soundtrack perfectly match the similarly retro style of the game's visuals, many of the songs from both Undertale and Deltarune have made lasting impacts on their fan base and the internet as a whole. There are people out there who only recognize some of the songs as that meme song or the instrumental to the greatest Kanye song that wasn't made by Kanye. There's a lot of songs from both Undertale and Deltarune soundtracks, but if I had to recommend two songs, they'd be Fallen Down and Rude Buster from Deltarune. Man, I feel like I'm missing something. <laughs> oh my god, I can't escape this song. There was a time when this song was everywhere. And it is still nearly everywhere. There are a few other songs from games that have been as memed to death as Megalovania. But there's one I can't ignore. One that won't go away no matter how many times it pretends to. Grand! I can't even pretend to understand every reference and niche within this giant shit post of a channel. I just can't. It's too powerful. But it does bring me along to almost a new conversation entirely. Video game music rip channels are one of the only ways that allow us to actually appreciate the music from games, but are unfortunately dying off as companies <coughs> Nintendo keep sending copyright strikes their way. Earlier this year, Gilva Sunner had to delete the entire channel due to these copyright strikes. So while there's still ways of accessing game OSTs, I think it'd be a good time to start saving soundtracks that aren't important to you. There's a really great website that I'll leave a link to in the description that lets you download extremely high quality rips of tons of game soundtracks. It doesn't have everything, but it's all we've really got right now. It really sucks to see companies take this stance against fans of their games for just enjoying music in convenient ways. And yes, I know, they have all the right to do this, but that doesn't really make it right. The fact that people go out of their way to find places to listen to soundtracks just proves that video game music has a very lasting impact on people that play the games, and in my opinion, is a very important part in making games enjoyable. Maybe not for deaf people, though.